Eat the Slipping Market here in Victoria to make a healthy, gluten-free and plant-based recipe in the cafe with their chef, Tina De Palma. Let's go to the kitchen. Hey Tina, thanks for hanging out with me today. Can you tell us a bit more about the food you make in the cafe? We try to accommodate everybody and their dietary needs, such as being vegan or vegetarian, gluten-free. We do a lot of keto meals as well. And this is uh, MCT oil, which stands for medium chain triglyceride, which is a fractionated coconut oil. So a lot of salads and prefab foods that we measure and weigh, and as well as... My desserts too! Our soups are fresh every single day and they are dairy-free and gluten-free. And all the food is absolutely fantastic. I've tried a lot of it. So what's the most popular thing on the menu here? Well, the Buddha bowls have started to take off really well and the same with the BLT salad. The wraps as well as the vegan wrap and the yam and beet wrap as well. I love the Buddha bowl. Oh my gosh, I could eat those every day. Yeah, and there's so many different ones to choose from. And then we also have the option as you can add a hard-boiled egg or chicken or turkey or roast beef to it if that's what you're liking is. There's options to add on as well. That's awesome. I like that you can customize them. Very much. Always open to everybody if they have any suggestions. We have a sandwich bar, so you can always do add-ons. What are we making today? Today we're making cauliflower sweet potato teriyaki bowl. Oh my God. Sounds so good, I'm excited. Okay. okay, show us. So what we did is to make cauliflower rice, not sure if you're familiar, familiar with it, but there's so many different ways to do it. So I clean the cauliflower and I break, them, break it down and then I put it through a food processor. I don't, I put it through the slicing processor because it breaks down too much already when you're cooking it. Right. So I sauteed some garlic and some onions. Oh, that looks good. And then I've taken some corn some frozen corn and I've added some cumin and some paprika and salt and pepper and I smoked that on the stove top. Oh, wow. And then I took my sweet potatoes, cut them, washed them of course, and added a teriyaki and then I put it into the oven and baked it slowly to caramelize. Wow, oh my goodness, check this out. Can I dare I? Oh me. my god. <laughs> Sorry, I can't resist. It's really good. Did I pass? Mm. You passed. Okay. Flying colors. <laughs> so what's the sauce that you have on there? So it's a gluten-free teriyaki sauce. Awesome. And I see you have some edamame here. Yes. Well. Very popular. Uh, edamame. Great little protein source. Okay. So let's assemble a dish. Okay. Let's do it. And the whole calories to this is 234 calories. Wow. So not bad at all. So our base is always the cauliflower rice. So dish up two of those into there. And it's all about presentation. Yes, it is. Okay, what are you gonna do now? Okay, so I'm gonna go for the edamame, which I love so much. Yes. And I'll put that over here. What, like two spoonfuls? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Okay, and then the corn. The corn. We're getting corny. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're pretty. <laughs> okay, so I did a few. Big spoonfuls there. Great. Avocado, my favorite. Okay, and a little sprinkle with green onions and sesame seeds. Yum. So basically, you just you make all the ingredients separately, yes. and then you just throw it all together. It's very easy, and the more you make, the more you can add on to different things. Like you can, you know, do as carrots as well add some ginger and oh, pineapple yeah, carrots juice. Oh be really pretty on there. Okay, well we better have a bite. So let's see, a potato, some cauliflower, corn. Oh my goodness, I'm I out of room. fit that much. I'm out there. of room. No, I have to get everything. Okay, there. It's called the perfect bite. There you go. Okay. We're gonna cheers this. Oh, we're cheersing it. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. cheers. cheers. Five. Now I'm in the Angel's Market and I'm going to pick up the ingredients to make two healthy recipes at home. Got my list here. 
and I need some mushrooms. And all this produce is organic. Cashews, my favorite little snack. Some peanut butter. I'm back in my own kitchen now where I'm going to make cashew cheese stuffed mushrooms and chocolate peanut butter balls. These recipes are both gluten-free and dairy-free and I especially love them for entertaining. It's so easy to just pick them up and pop them in your mouth. I'm gonna get started on the mushrooms first and for this I need to make some cashew cheese. This is so creamy and delicious and really easy to make. I've got my blender here. I'm adding one cup of raw cashews. I have a third of a cup of water. Two tablespoons of lemon juice that's going to give it that tang. Half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt or sea salt and you want to make sure that the cheese is salty because once it gets into the mushroom it mutes that saltiness. And my last ingredient is a tablespoon of nutritional yeast. So this is going to give it a little bit of a cheesy flavor. That's it. I'm going to pop the top on. I'm going to blend it until it's completely smooth and creamy. Let's take a peek. Ooh, it's so creamy. Got to take a taste test too. Mm. It's kind of salty, a little bit tangy, and it's perfect. So now I'm going to transfer this into a bowl. And you can add even more salt if you want. Look at that. This cheese is great on its own, on crackers or with veggies. And you can add any herbs or spices in. Spice it up a bit. I'm gonna set this aside and chop up some fresh parsley and a little bit of green onion. Fresh herbs are nice, but you can also use dried herbs in a pinch. A little green onion. And this is going in too. Now I'm going to fold it all together. Mmm, look at that. Okay, I'm setting this aside and now I'm going to move on to my mushrooms. Now you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you need a damp paper towel and your mushrooms. I'm using my damp paper towel to wipe the mushrooms clean. This is really important. You don't want to run them under water because they'll soak up all that water and you can get mushy. So just give them a little wipe like that. They're good. You can also do this with cremini mushrooms or even portobello mushrooms for really big ones. There we go, my mushrooms are clean, and now I'm gonna pop the stems out. So I'm just gonna use my hands here and pull the stem to one side, the other side, and voila. Set those aside. I like to save these for a stir fry or something later. I've got a baking sheet here. I'm gonna put onto my counter. And I've got a small spoon to fill the mushrooms with the cheese. So you want to get it right down into the hole, and I like to mound the cheese on top. And don't worry, you don't have to be perfect about it. Just get the cheese in there. And if you don't tell your guests that this isn't made with dairy, they won't even know. But it's cashew cheese. They're ready to go and I'm gonna pop them in the oven for 15 minutes to start and then I'm gonna check and see how they're doing. Whoa, they're rolling all over the place. <laughs> I have a little bit of extra parsley that I've chopped up here as a garnish on the top. And I have some roasted red peppers that I'm gonna use on the top as well. So this makes a great flavorful topping. Maybe a little bit more finely. I've checked the mushrooms once already and I've added another two minutes onto the cooking time. Now I know they're ready. 
and I'm going in. Ooh, look how that cheese has puffed up a bit. Oh, if only you could smell this. The only thing I have left to do is top them with my garnishes. So the roasted red pepper, just gonna put a little on top. You can eat them just like this if you want. I also like to top them with caramelized onions, so that's a nice idea if you do have more time. And a little sprinkle of parsley to top it all off. There we go. Now the hardest part here is waiting for them to cool enough so that I can eat one. There, let's transfer these onto a nice serving plate. There you have it, my cashew cheese and herb stuffed mushrooms that are so easy to make and really delicious. I hope you enjoy them. Now the best part, I get to take a bite. Mmm, oh, mm. hot and steamy and really, really delicious. Moving on to the chocolate peanut butter balls, which are one of my favorite treats, and I'm gonna share two variations with you. For this, you just need a bowl and your ingredients, super easy. I have half a cup of natural peanut butter here. Now, you can do salted or unsalted. If you use a salted version, then don't add the extra salt. This is going into my bowl. third of a cup of almond flour. Now this is just blanched almonds that have been ground down. Two tablespoons of coconut flour. For my sweetener, I have two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. You can also use agave nectar or coconut nectar. quarter teaspoon of Himalayan salt. Make sure to add the salt because it really pops the flavors. You need that. I have half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Make sure to get the natural stuff because some vanillas have sugar added to them. And one and a half tablespoons of melted coconut oil. I'm gonna simply mix it all together really well. You want to stir it vigorously until it starts to stiffen. So there it is, it's starting to stiffen up. Now I'm going to place it into the fridge for at least 30 minutes for it to firm up so that I can roll it into balls. My dough is chilled and I'm rolling it into balls. You can make these as big or as small as you like. Squeeze it in your hand and roll it around. Now I'm gonna finish up with the dough and then I'm gonna pop these in the freezer while I melt the chocolate. Now I'm gonna get my chocolate melting. You can use whatever dark chocolate you like here and I'm using bars, but you could use chocolate chips if you like. You want enough to make about one and a half cups. I'm gonna chop this up. Get your arm workout. This is how I earn my treats. <laughs> bowl of chocolate over my pot of hot water here on the stove. You don't want the bowl to touch the water. And I'm adding a little bit of coconut oil into this. You could use avocado oil as well. So about one teaspoon. You want to stir it occasionally. It's melting up nicely here and it's almost ready to go. I've got a parchment paper lined tray here and a fork for dipping. So I'm going to pop a ball into the chocolate. Make sure that the whole thing gets coated. Just roll it around in there. Use the fork to lift it out and then just drag it along the side of the bowl to release any excess chocolate. And now I'm going to sprinkle some chopped peanuts on top 
This is optional, but I think it adds a nice touch. And I'm gonna continue with the rest of the peanut balls. You wanna make sure that you sprinkle the peanuts on top before the chocolate hardens. Mm, yummy, it smells so good in here. So there we are. I'm gonna put these into the fridge just for a few minutes until the chocolate hardens up and then I can eat one. The best part is cleanup, AKA licking the bowl. go wrong with melted chocolate. I just pulled them out of the fridge. The chocolate is hard and now I'm going to give them a quick trim and they're ready to go. So this just makes them look a little bit better. Just trimming them up with my little paring knife here onto the platter. There's some other ones that I've made. I like to eat the trimmings. Chef's treat. There we go. How is this for a beautiful platter of chocolate peanut butter balls? Now, these ones are a different variation. I've actually added cacao powder to the original peanut butter dough for a double chocolate peanut butter ball. Let me show you. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I hope you enjoyed these recipes. Visit me at sweetlyraw.com for more awesome, healthy recipes and now I better try the other peanut butter ball. Mmm. You've got to try both versions. I'll see you next time.